started out talking about the change that my father, he predicted, and, and I didn't say this to him, but it's, it was like my father had seen the future. Because he didn't just predict it, he, he expressed a joyful happiness and an energy and exuberance when he expressed the prediction that he gave uh, what, what the country would be like. And even him running, how, to, how we would never be the same. He predicted a change. And the, the population of the, the citizens of the United States of America, but more than anything, the change in us. Right. And uh, so I, I, you know, my speech, uh, to, I was going to say, I have faith in that change. I believe in that change. You know, yeah. But I expressed it. Right. And he looked in at me, being the, 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 the beautiful man that he is, and he said, you told me. And, you know, I said, I told him. So and he also said, your father and I were very close. I said, wow, his assistant already told me that. You know how you can tell a hard-headed child something a hundred times, hundred times, hundred times? It ain't until see, they see it for themselves and they say, wow. They say, well, I've been telling you that all along. You know? so that's how I felt. That's how I felt. I said, wow. And so I said, oh, praise the Lord to Allah. So this is a, a truly a blessing. And so I, it, it humbled me so that I had to go back, you know, you know how they say your life flashed before your eyes? So I went back to I was a little boy. When, when, when uh, extreme things like that happen, big emotional things affect your life, uh, you know, state near death experiences or whatever. But my heart didn't raise. I wasn't, so I wasn't here in the physical. Uh, but it was a, uh, an experience that I'll never forget. So I told him, I said, you know, I, yeah, I spoke to him like this. I, you know, forgive my speech or whatever. Uh, that's what I was thinking. I said, you know, I'm I said, this will lie in my mind. And I said, you know how my father has the ability to communicate to uh, a person, no matter what their background is, mm -hmm. a child, mm -hmm. a scholar, wise old person, mm -hmm. an ignorant person, an educated person. And he can communicate so clearly that they have no confusion, mm -hmm. no confusion. Mm -hmm. So I said, I was a little boy when my father first, uh, I knew him, a loving man that, Oh, the world, the, it was like when he was around, it was like somebody turned the lights on. You were in complete darkness. The world was lit up. All you saw was his smile and his eyes yes. as a boy. That's what I remember. All I saw was his smile and his eyes and he, him engaging you. Right. He would engage you. And he would, he, it seemed like he would just revel in, the, in your pleasure and your happiness. That he wanted to, he, if he saw you happy, oh man. He go into the uh, good humor man. If he's a man. <laughs> you know, he start telling jokes and playing with you, and you say, "Oh man!" So a lot of my witnesses, I, 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 told, I mentioned before, I don't joke. We used to knock each other over when we heard my father was on the way in the house. Literally, you know, just something we wouldn't think that I want to be the first person to jump in daddy's arms. You know? Right. So he communicated so clearly that he was a beautiful soul. That's first, and then he told me who Allah was. And I knew the beauty of Allah and His creation and my relationship. You know, I knew that I was God's creation and created for to serve Him, and that His mercy was so abundant and so beautiful. He created my beautiful dad that I love. He created everything that built, you know, everything, you know. And He didn't explain it to me. I could go on explaining, explaining to this audience, but He explained it to a little five or six year old child. I don't know how old I was, but Allah is my witness. I also knew who, how the world was. I think, uh, I don't know if he was a leader at the time, he may have been, but uh, I reflected on some things, some, maybe some violence or some things that I'd heard about in the house, on the street, how dangerous the streets was, and some things some of the FOI used to deal with. Because, you know, they used to come to our, they used to be at our house. As a matter of fact, they used to sit in front of our house, in the front and in the back. So I used to hear about things, and, and, uh, and then immediately I felt heavy weight on me, and the burden is that why is the world so corrupt? Why is the world so burdened with evil? Why is there so much uh, hatred and when Allah is so beautiful and so merciful? And I thought in my mind, I said, I want Imam, I want my daddy, I don't know. I said, my daddy got to change this world. People should know my daddy. So from that, Allah is my witness. My father, you know, I didn't, I wasn't taught a wound or nothing. That my father was my, my savior, as I would say. For the world, for the evils that I saw in the world, I, I, I took a hold of him as a little boy, and I never let go. And he has never let me down. 
Wow. 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 Never wow. ever let me down. So I told the president, I said, you know what? You are a fulfillment, and you helped to lift some of that burden that I carried all those years right. at the, the evils in the world and thinking that what is Allah going to do to redeem the souls of the innocent and the, and, and the people affected by all of this corruption in the world? Like, what, what, could, what could give that back to us, you know, that purity and that innocence? And, uh, you know, I feel it all the way. I feel it, especially through Imam Muhammad talking about babies and uh, back to the president. They asked him a question, and what does he enjoy doing? He went through the, the obvious things, but he expressed, first of all, he expressed spending time with his family. And then he said, I love little babies. And I said, he said, any babies. I think he said something like that, any babies, anybody's babies. He said, when you see me, I, I always like being close to babies. And that, returning to that innocence, yeah, that is what gives you the ability to handle those big, heavy things, to handle that weight. It's to return to that innocence. So, a lot right by. We are truly a blessed people to have the leader, Imam W.D. Muhammad, who was truly blessed. Yes. And blessed because of his nature and uh, the circumstances that he is us. He is us. That he didn't like us to point to him. I could point to him all day long, but I, but I couldn't do it and do I couldn't do it in justice because he's an individual. That Allah came to redeem a whole people. Yes. Yes. He came to He came to correct wrongs that existed in the world since the beginning of time, yes. and to show us His man. Yes. To show us His man. His His man. Yes. Under Allah. Allah. And uh, I think I touched all bases, and I probably took up everybody's time. Allah. Allah. I pray Allah continues to bless us, to keep us strong, yes. Yes. and to keep us one, yes. and to keep our hearts one, and to increase our love. For one another, and I love first of all for Allah and His Messenger, yes. Prophet yes. Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Yes. And without, did we truly live in the, in the, in the day of uh, Muhammad? Yes. And, uh, and we have the best example for us yes, that if we ever wonder what it would be like to walk in the footsteps or live during the time, those great times of, of our Prophet, that. Any of us that had the opportunity to be in the presence of Imam W.D. Muhammad, if but for a few minutes, right. if you had the opportunity to hear him, yes. to be near him, yes. and to feel his spirit, yes. and his faith, and his yes. belief, then you, your, your, your prayer has been answered. Yes. Your prayer has been answered. Yes. Yes. So thank you.